Thank you. It's good to be with you. I, uh, I'm just honored to be here and to be part of this. I know many of you could be up here sharing the resources that you are aware of that others can use, and that's really my goal in this time. Let me just thank the staff, thank Dr. Cho. It's always good to see you, my brother, and to see all these amazing things that our Asian leaders are engaged in, to both engage with the global scene, with the Asian scene, and then to push uh, with God's power and strength and the Holy Spirit that mission and kingdom purposes out to the nations. So thank you. You have in your, uh, in your binder my, my presentation. I won't read it all, but uh, you can read some of the detail there that I don't include, if that's helpful. Frontier Ventures is the new name of what was the U.S. Center for World Mission. It's just a new brand. Uh, people in the West like those kind of things every so often, and young people especially. So if you don't get it and you want to call it U.S. Center for World Mission, that's okay. Just don't do that when you're in Pasadena. Otherwise, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, and our, our, our goal, our sort of byline is to catalyze kingdom breakthrough. That's our heart. That's our passion. Uh, let me just briefly uh, share my wonderful wife a picture of her anyway with you. That was the day we rebranded, by the way. We took pictures of the staff in front of that sign. And then my family, and I won't introduce everybody, but I will introduce my grandson, Silas, uh, there. And uh, one more on the way. Uh, so they're being productive uh, children, and, and, uh, and that's a great blessing to me. You know, all of this goes back to, whoops, went through to, all this goes back to the promise to Abraham. Boy, it's not wanting to give me that, so let me back up and I'll just read it for you. I can't do it. I don't know why. Interesting. Uh, the promise to Abraham in Genesis 12. I probably don't even need to read it to this group. But the idea that, that he would be a blessing to all the families of the earth. And I love that translation, actually. You could talk about ethne and other things, but really the gospel spreads through family, as we heard this morning from pastor here in the Philippines, and through those connections, which grows to more connections and, and, uh, and, and reaches and connects and shares and communicates with family. Well, our vision at Frontier Ventures is to see growing Jesus movements established within every unreached people group or least reached people group. And we seek to do that through initiating and accelerating breakthroughs of the gospel to each of those least reached groups by trying to discern and disseminate insights. So we hear insights at a meeting like this, and then we share those with others. Maybe you could even say we're, we're, we're plagiarizing you. I got some great ideas in the last session that I'm going to tweet or share in some other way, or write an editorial page about, or put on a blog. And so those kinds of things, we, we, we all, I think, can share ideas. And so we disseminate those. Uh, and then we use as well those to mobilize and equip people so that we think about some of the issues that our sister raised, again, in the last hour and some of our other sessions, to equip people for the task that they have, for their unique task, maybe in tools and in ways that we don't understand, but which help them in sharing the gospel. And so that barriers can be overcome, we can have innovation, launch innovations and overcome barriers to the gospel. We know those are only human barriers. God can break down any barrier, and the Spirit is doing that and has to do that in every individual's life who follows him, but that's why we're about. So another way we say it is we participate in the gospel of mission by overcoming obstacles and pursuing solutions towards kingdom breakthrough. And ultimately, we want to see that happen as we read in Revelation 5 and 7. And uh, I'll just, uh, there, there are some different ways that we do that in terms of engaging, equipping, and connecting people. And uh, we primarily work through pioneering leaders and organizations worldwide who are pushing past the edges of the kingdom. Sometimes they're risk takers, influencers, early adopters who have in an innovative spirit. And so the spirit of our work is to kind of survey the world. That's part of the reason why I come to meetings like this, to see what's happening, to see how God is moving with the aim of identifying gaps or barriers or obstacles and to, uh, to see us uh, penetrate further into this area of frontier missions. 
we try and create and germinate uh, learning environments to, for new ideas and pursue solutions uh, and including things like strategic prayer and other things to, uh, and, and you'll see a, fir a list of some more of these kinds of things in the, in the uh, binder. And so we do that to encourage people who have one of several roles, sometimes we have all these roles, those who are actually goers. We all do that, some maybe where we live, but some are signed to go cross-culturally in other places. Senders, those who are backing them, and, mobilize, and then mobilizers. If we don't have mobilizers, then people aren't praying, people aren't giving, people aren't engaged, people are not challenged for the task remaining. So there are several tools uh, that we seek to share, and uh, many of these are translated into other languages. I won't be able to talk about all of that today. One is through the ministry uh, that many of you know called William Carey Library, which is a publishing house. And uh, we published books since the late 60s, actually before our organization was even founded, William Carey Library was founded. And we're trying to share uh, mission, uh, mission kinds of resources with uh, the global scene. Another one is the course Perspectives on the World Christian Movement. Can you read that? I'm just kidding. Uh, that's for a brochure, not for PowerPoint. But uh, many of you know this course with a biblical, cultural, uh, I'm sorry, biblical, historical, cultural, and strategic sections. It's been translated into, well, I'll get to that in a second. Some 200,000 or so people have taken it in uh, the U.S. And what you can't see in the detail on that screen is that 20% of the alumni, I can't even see it on this screen. Let me get out my readers here. 20% of the alumni go on to serve in long-term mission. And of the 250 or so classes that are taught every year with some 8,000 people, and that's just in the U.S., 82% of the alumni feel they have a stronger understanding of the importance of living, in a strategic, of living a strategic lifestyle after taking the class. It's also used in 24 different nations in five different languages. It's now in uh, Chinese, both in the complex and the simplified character, uh, and there will be some 25 classes run in a country we will not name this year more than we expected. Um, we're also beginning to go into French. It's in Korean, uh, Spanish, uh, used in English, other places as well. So it's a great resource, which these other places are asking for. We're not pushing it on them. We help them in the translation process and, and coordinate often, but uh, it's being requested by people to help mobilize and train and send. Another ministry, and you can pick up a, a copy if you didn't already. There's a few left. The table, by the way, is over in this corner where are the books that... Uh, Young Cho mentioned uh, as well, Mission Frontiers Magazine, this particular one is on Fuller's School of World Mission or School of Intercultural Studies, and, uh, which started about 50 years ago, and uh, so we did a special issue on that for them. You can always download the magazine online at missionfrontiers.org. Again, the websites are in the uh, binder, so you can look those up, and you can get an email that tells you when the new issue is posted. Uh, which I think would be a great resource. And you can go back and get uh, back issues for free as well. If you have a hard time getting things off the Internet, talk to me later. I've got uh, many of the issues of Mission Frontiers on a thumb drive as well as some other resources. Uh, another one that many of you have already mentioned and tapped into is Joshua Project, where we just basically are trying to hear and listen to what's, uh, what researchers, actual researchers, are doing around the world and put that in a way that can help people to understand the world situation and pray more effectively and engage more effectively. And uh, the total estimated number of unreached, and of course there are different definitions, is 6,600. And about a million people go to Joshua Project every month. 60% uh, of those are from outside North America. But maybe that other number that's above that would be good for me to share. It doesn't really have anything to do with Joshua Project. It's just a number the researchers have come up with, it may be too high, it may be too low, but it's somewhere around 86%. That's the number that haunts me. 86% of the Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists of the world do not personally know a Christian. They've never met anyone like Jesus from a different culture, from their own culture, from any culture. Which is, of course, one of the first things we need to do is start meeting people and just being friends to people often. 
So that's Joshua Project. Another thing we have is a Global Prayer Digest. And I'm out of copies. These went very quickly, but I have one here. I plan on giving this to someone. So, but this has also been translated into Spanish, into Korean, into Chinese. Uh, it is, I should say, is translated every month into those languages, and we'd love to do others. Um, it's basically a daily prayer tool to put these groups of the unreached or least reached in front of us for prayer. This month we're praying often for Muslim peoples that are in Sweden. Go figure. This particular issue has, uh, is two months at a time, one of which is focused on uh, Los Angeles and the other which is uh, in, uh, I can't tell if it's Thailand or Laos, I didn't check. But uh, anyway, there's two months in there, and, and you can, again, go get this down, downloaded. You can get information on previous months. You can probably find your country in there at some point in, in the last few years, and uh, so we're trying to encourage prayer as well. Another resource that we've been behind, others are involved in this as well, is the International Journal for Frontier Missions, uh, and you can go download all of the back issues. I mentioned earlier in some other sessions a paper by our own David Lim, who's here, on ancestor veneration and, and how to look at that issue as Christians. Uh, a wonderful article, it's in the current issue, which you can go and click on there, or you can go into the archives and download any other articles you want. I think David's article is significant for Asia. It would get, it, it, to, to summarize it, and maybe it's a bit of a, a, a controversial issue, we want to follow the Bible when it says that we should honor our mother and our father. So. You read his article and see what you think. He's done some significant research, as David always does, on the issue and how it's been viewed historically. I encourage you to take a look at that. And then uh, another ministry of ours is the, uh, it's a separate corporation, the William Carey International University, uh, basically offering uh, MA and PhD degrees at a distance. So most of our students never come to our campus, although we have graduations and sometimes they like to come for that if they can. We'll, we'll, uh, we're, we're encouraged by that, and we'd love to talk to you more about that. There are a number of other ministries that uh, I won't mention uh, here uh, now. You can look these up, all of them through FrontierVentures.org if you want, and see if there's something that might be helpful or might be a model. Maybe you'll take just one little piece. Some of our MA program, for example, at the university, people will take the core of it and then add on or, or supplement or replace some of that core with their own material. So for example, there's a translation track in our MA program that, that Wycliffe SIL has been instrumental in putting together. Uh, there's a track that's specifically for Native Americans. So Native American leaders are getting MAs and PhDs through our different ministries. So uh, I'd love to chat with you some more. Uh, you can come pick up a copy of Mission Frontiers over in the corner or pick up one of the books. I also bought a few books of this thing, A Global Gospel, talking about the honor-shame issue, an excellent tool to describe that issue. I've got, I think, two or three copies left. Love to have that resource in people's hands. Thank you.